Okay, so let's look at two methods we can use to be able to calculate extremely large numbers. So the methods that we'll use will look, will focus on elliptic curve cryptography and with discrete logarithms. So with discrete logarithms, we have something like g to the power of x mod n. And where n is a prime number, g is what's called the generator and x is our variable. And obviously our values will get very large if x is a value that's uh, 120 bits long. So that would be very inefficient for us to be able to just keep multiplying g by x times. So we need to find a way that we can actually optimize the calculation of this um, uh, equation. With elliptic curve cryptography, what we have, if we look at its analog form, we have the form of y squared is equal to x cubed plus ax plus uh, b and mod p. And we have a generator point. For this, we then define for a random value x that we add g, point addition, x times. So it would be very inefficient for us to actually add g many times because this can be up to two, to the power of 256 bits. And that's an extremely large number. So in elliptic curve cryptography, we have two operations, basically. We can double the points and we can add the points. Those are very efficient methods in elliptic curve. So we will see how we could use that to be able to calculate or compute this value here. X to the power X times G. So this is multiplicative, where this is an exponent format. And the two methods that we'll look at are double and add for this method. And over here, we have square and multiply. This is given the name of uh, Montgomery reduction, named after Peter Montgomery. And this is often known as a Montgomery ladder. But it's a very efficient way that we can calculate our discrete logarithms and our elliptic curve methods. So let's look initially at uh, our double and add operation. It's a very simple algorithm that we use. If the bit position that we're looking at is equal to a zero, then we double a value, double our points. If, but if the bit is equal to a one, we double and we add. So it's a very simple algorithm that we're going to use to be able to compute very large values. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's say we have x equal to uh, 100. In binary, that's 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So we can either start from either side, but let's start from the least significant bit and we'll analyze. Okay, so we're going to start off with uh, a value. And let's say we have a running total value of n equals g. So this will be our double. Okay, so we're going to take a point and the base point initially, and then we're going to double each time round. And along with this, we'll take our uh, other value which will be our point that we want to compute. And we'll call that Q. Okay, so Q will be this value here. 
And what we'll do is we'll, we'll continue and we'll keep going through the loop. And then at the end, our value of Q should be equal to the end point here, which is X times G. In this case, it will be 100 G. G added 100 times. Okay, so let's go through our algorithm and we'll make a start. So the first bit is a zero, okay? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna double this value here. Okay, and we still have a Q equal to zero. And the next value is a zero. So we're gonna double our point again. But now we hit a one and we're going to add and double. Okay, so we'll add, that's we have zero and we have four Q. So now Q is equal to four Q. Okay, G added to itself four times. And we'll double again, because we do that every single time. The double operation is quite simple in elliptic curve. And also the point addition is an easy operation. So that's quite efficient in terms of what we're doing here. Next, we have a zero. Okay, so we'll double. And that just stays the same. Next, we have a zero. Okay, so we'll double again and we're up to 32G. G plus G plus G, 32 times. And uh, we're not doing a point addition here. So we're still at four. 4q, 4g that should be. Now we have a 1, it's good. So the 1, now n is 64. And what we'll do is that we'll add 4 and the 32 together for our point uh, addition. So q is now equal to 64, as 36g there. Okay, next one, it's a one, so we'll double. And then we we'll want, because it's a one, we'll take that point and that point and we'll make Q equal to 100 G. And we've now computed the value here for 100 G. So basically the number of operations that we take is fixed to the number of bits within our value. So if that was 256 bits, then it would take 256 of these operations, very simple operations to get us to a very large value, which might be something with 256 bits. And because we don't want side channels, we would probably keep going on with our calculations so that somebody can't see that we've only got these number of bits. Okay, so that's the uh, double and add method that we would use an elliptic curve to very quickly compute our values using a very simple uh, operation. When it comes to square and multiply, obviously we're going to be taking very large numbers. G might be two or three. But it doesn't really matter if we use if we take g to the power of a of a 256 bit value it will be extremely mm -hmm. large so we take into account the power of having the mod operation to make this more uh, efficient in in our approach and basically the method relates to that it's quite easy to quickly move up steps if we square a value so we can go up to 8 then to the 16 and say 5 to the power of 32 if we do a square operation then we will we'll jump in terms of the values that, that that we that we get so what we do is that we, just like this one, rather than using a double, we use a square. And rather than use an add, we use the, the multiply. So we can very quickly uh, move uh, up and down 
in terms of uh, computing a large value. So if we take a simple uh, case of a value, so we might have an exponent of 12 and a value of 5. So we want to compute 5 to the power of, of 12 uh, in an efficient uh, way from, from there. So we might, uh, for the first time round, so we have 1100. Zero, zero. So with this method, uh, we start with the most significant bit and then we, we start from the, from the 1 and then we'll move to the first bit. If the first bit is a 1, then we perform a square and then a multiply. Square, multiply. Okay, so the square will be squared like that. And then we will multiply to give us 5 to the power of 3. The next bit is a 0. So we will square uh, that value to take us to 5 to the power of 6. And then the next bit is a 0. So again, we'll square and we get 5 to the power of 12. So you can see in this method, what we really need to do is only have two operations which is the square function. So we can very efficiently create a function which will square the value and we just need to have an adding function. If we bring in the mod n, then we can make sure that for every operation that we have, that we bring in a mod operation and that will constrain the output so that we're dealing with numbers that only have up to the number of bits that n has in it. So we would often define uh, this with a prime number and the number of bits that we have in the prime number, uh, say 128 bits or 256 bits, will give us the length of the result and that will constrain the values that we'll be using. So even though 5 to the power of 12 might be an extremely large number, if we perform a mod n operation on it as part of the steps, then it will constrain the value to 256 bits, say in this case. Okay, so those are the two uh, main methods that we would use in order to be able to compute our very large values. They're kind of related. Uh, this is an, an exponential and an exponent method with discrete logs, and this is an elliptic curve method. We use multiplication here, where we use exponent here. The computation of this one is much simpler than it is with the discrete log uh, problem. To give you some idea, uh, the prime numbers we would typically use in discrete log methods, such as for the Diffie-Hellman uh, key exchange method, are moving towards 2,000 bits long or even 4,000 bits. So the prime number we select here needs to be fairly large. If we use curve 25519 and the prime number is only 2 to the power of 2551 minus 19. Uh, so this is a much smaller number. It only has 256 bits maximum. And even with the other elliptic curves, then we're dealing with 128 bit or 260 bit or 200, 256 bit. So the calculations with an elliptic curve are much smaller because we're using a smaller prime number here. But it's still secure because even though we compute this and we know this and we know this, we cannot determine what this value is here and we don't have the computing power to be able to reverse that back again. Same with discrete logs if we have g to the power of x mod n then even though we know what the generator is and the prime number then it is not possible with the current computing to be able to work out what the value of x is. 
Okay, so this gives a quick overview in, in on how to, to uh, compute these large values.